We know that you are going to bless every one of us. And therefore, Lord, we pray that you will open the windows of heaven. And you will bring showers of blessings upon us in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that no boy, no girl will miss the blessing in Jesus' name. I pray that there will be showers of blessings upon every one of the children in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you touch every heart and touch every life. Touch everyone, Lord that we will be able to enjoy blessings from on high in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Ezekiel 34, 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. And there shall be showers of blessing. Here the Lord is telling us that we can expect a rain of blessings to come upon us as we meet together here. That none of us should go home dry. Or go home empty. Or go home sorrowful. Or go home without salvation or go home without blessing because the Lord said I will and when God says I will is making a promise that not even Satan can change so the Lord is promising us blessings but the question is how shall or how will the shower come how will the shower come there are nine things I want to tell you about what will happen before finally the shower will come. And I'm going to concentrate on First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. Now, I told you that I'm going to talk about nine things. I told you I'm going to play some uh, number games with you. You might wonder why in particular I choose nine. Well, I choose nine because number one is one short of ten. Two, nine is uh, the single unit figure that is the highest. You go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then if you are going to write 10, you have to make use of part of those numbers we have mentioned, 0 and 1. If you are going to write 11, you have to make use of the numbers I mentioned already, 1 and 1. If you are going to write 12, you are going to make use of 1 and 2. Any other number you are going to write, you are going to make use of the figures 0 to 9. And 9 happens to be the highest among them all. And so I'm interested in that number 9. I'm also interested in the number 9 because of another fact. What is... Uh, now you are going to do some writing. Are you ready? Okay. What is uh, 9 times 1? Okay, just write it down. What is uh, 9 times 2? Just write it down. Uh, what is 9 times 3? Again, 27, write it down. I see somebody in front of me here that is doing like this and not writing. What is 9 times 4? 36, just write it down. What is uh, 9 times 5? 45. What is 9 times uh, 6? 54, put it down. What is 9 times 7? 63, 9 times 8? 72, 9 times 9? Again? And 9 times 10? Let's stop there for a moment. Uh, you know, if you look at all those numbers, you will see 9 at the first, and then nine zero at the end. Have you seen that? 
Then if you look at them, you'll see the second is one and eight. The other one on this other end is eight and one. Have you seen that? And the third one here is two and seven. And the third to the last there is seven and two. And the next one here is three and six. And the other one here is six and three. Am I right? And the next one there is uh, four and five. And the next one there is five and five. You see, that's why I'm interested in that number nine. Now I'm going to do another thing with those numbers who are reaching down. Now if you take one and eight and you add together, what do you have? If you take two and seven, you add together, what do you have? Three and six, add together. Four and five, add together. Five and four, add together. Six and three, add together. And um, seven and two, add together. Eight and one, add together. 9 and 0 add them together. That's why 9 is my favorite number. Uh, how many fingers do we have? How many? 10. Okay, now uh, do your hands like this and just let me have your attention and have your 10 fingers as well. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do something. I'm going to start from my own left and go to my own right. And I'm going to make this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Are you alright? Did you get my point? So if I'm going to look for uh, 9 times 1, I drop my first finger as 1, and then I count the rest of the fingers, I'm going to have what? So I, I know that 9 times 1 is going to be my 9 fingers remaining, so that's 9. If I want 9 times 2, I drop my second finger. You know what I discovered? I discovered there's one finger here, 8 fingers here, 1 and 8, that's my 18. And 9 times 3, this is number 3 now, and I have 2 fingers on that side. How many fingers do I have on this side? 7, that's 27. 9 times 4, and I have my number 4 finger that I drop, and I have my 3 fingers there, and 6 on this side. What is that? 36, and this is my number 5, and 9 times 5, I have my 4 fingers remaining on 5 here, what is that? That is 45, I now go to my second hand, that is number 6 now, and I say 9 times 6, and I have 5 on this side, and 4 on this side, and that is um, 54, and I drop this one as my number 7, and 9 times 7 is... Um, now this is 6 on this side with this, and that is a 3. I drop this one as number 8, and 9 times 8 is 7 here, 2 there. That is 72, and 9 times this number 9. And I have uh, 8 here, and what remains there? 1, 81. And this is number 10 now. Let me see whether it will work. I have here 9 times 10. I have 9 here, nothing on that side. That is 90. And so you have, um, you see the reason why I'm interested in uh, that number nine. Nine is, uh, you know, it's a very good number. Uh, and uh, what is, uh, by the way, what is uh, nine times twelve? Anybody knows that? What is it? Did you know that if I add one, zero, and eight together, what will I get? Any number that is divisible by 9, if I add all the numbers together, I'm going to eventually get 9. Well then, uh, I'm going to talk about these 9 things. I've now gone away from your mathematics, I've come back to the Bible. Are you alright? Uh, you know what I'm doing? I'm picking my uh, story that I'm going to tell you from First Kings chapter 18. What do you think of that chapter in what we've been doing now? First Kings chapter 18. That's 18. Do you remember our friend 18? What do you remember about 18? It's a multiple of 9. And 1 and 8 is going to make 9. So tonight is, uh, you know, a great fitting day for the number 9. Now open your Bible to First Kings and chapter, chapter what? 18. You'll never forget because of the connection with 9. And we're going to look at nine things there as to how the blessing eventually came. How the showers of blessing came upon the people of God, the children of Israel. And we're going to be reading uh, some selected verses. 
I read these selected verses because our time is gone and we cannot read uh, actually everything. We're going to look at verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came unto Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. That is the number one thing that you need to notice if you are expecting the blessing of God. The number one thing is the promise of God. Write it down, number one. The promise of God. You see, there had been famine in the land of Israel. There had been what we call drought in the land of Israel. Because there was no rain, the crops were not growing. Because the crops were not growing, there was no food. And because there was no food, everybody was hungry. And because they were hungry, they were getting sick. And they were growing lean. And things were very, very bad for them. And you will discover that when there is no rain, when there is no food, when there is much heat, everybody will be having sickness of one kind or the other. And it was in that condition they were. And then God told Elijah, the man of God, the servant of God, the prophet of God, it came to pass after many days, after the many, many days they had been suffering like that, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go and show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. If you are expecting the blessing of God, the very first thing for you to check up is the promise of God. The promise of God you find in the Bible. You say, can I find a promise in Genesis? Can I find a promise in Exodus? Can I find a promise in the Psalms? Can I find a promise in Isaiah? As Jesus left a promise for me in Matthew, as he given me a promise in Revelation, you check up in the Word of God. Where has God left a promise for me? The very first thing to check up, if you're expecting blessing from the Lord, check up, number one, the promise of the Lord. Now we're going to condition number two. And that is in verse 21. Verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And all the people answered him not a word. And the people answered him not a word. That number two thing is decision. Write that down. Decision. Elijah wanted the people to decide. Before you can have a blessing, there must be a decision. And so Elijah called upon them. He said, now I'm calling you to decision. He said, How long halt ye between two opinions? You know the one that is halting between, op between two opinions? is saying, I will go. I will not go. I will do it. I will not do it. I will pray. I will not pray. I will get saved now. I'll get saved another time. I will seek the Lord today. No, I think I'll rather play. I will not seek the Lord today. Halting between two opinions. I will cut off association from that bad company. Oh, I think if I do that so and so will not like it, I will not do it now. I will reject all those uh, evil spirits and I will not have any association with... Ah, if I do that, they may harm me, injure me, or even try to kill me. I will not steal again, ah, but I need a pair of shoes. If I don't steal, will I get a pair of shoes? Halting between two opinions. I'm going to be reading my Bible every day. Well, but I feel sleepy every time I wake up in the morning. I don't think I'll read my Bible again. I'm going to pray because I'm challenged by that little brother there, little sister there that is fervent in prayer. Well, I think that is our own choice. I don't think I'm going to pray today again. I'll pray tomorrow. Indecision. Halting between two opinions. 
as we're here, all that he told us in obeying the word of God, in being very serious and uh, dedicating myself to the Lord, I'm going to do it. Another mind will come. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to play a little. Halting between two opinions. So Elijah said, if you're going to have the blessing of God, come to a decision. How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, serve him. And if Baal, if Baal is the one you want to worship, then take a decision. And the people answered him not a word. So then, number one, the promise of God. Number two, the personal decision that you take. Decision. Number three, I'm going to look at verse 30. Verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Number three is fellowship. Fellowship. Come near unto me. Elijah said, I'm not your enemy. I'm your friend. The prophet of God. Teaching the way of the Lord. You have seen all those prophets of Baal. False prophets. They cried, they shouted, they caught themselves, they did quite a lot of things, but they were not able to bring the fire down. Therefore, come near, let's be in fellowship together. Bridge the gap between the prophet and the people. That's fellowship. Bridge the gap between the minister and the members. That's fellowship. Bridge the gap between yourself and the preacher of the word of God. That's the fellowship. Come near unto me. Don't turn away. Don't run away. Don't avoid the preacher. Don't avoid the one that is declaring the word of the Lord unto you. Come near unto me. And then it's, and it says, all the people came near unto him. They wanted the blessing of God. And the blessing of God is based upon our fellowship. Fellowship with God. If we say we have fellowship with God and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But when we fellowship with God and fellowship with one another, all the works of unrighteousness, sin and evil, we abandon. We say now we want to be in fellowship with God and in fellowship with one another. If there is any bad sin, any evil sin separating between you and God, you are going to repent of them. You are going to get rid of them. And you are going to allow fellowship between you and the Lord. Number three is fellowship. Now going to number four. Verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that, listen to this, I have done all these things at thy word. That's how to get the blessing of God. I have done, I have done, I have done all things according to thy word, because of your word, as instructed by your word, at thy word. What's number four? Obedience. Write it down obedience. You see, if we're going to receive the blessings of God, we cannot remain in disobedience. We cannot remain in rebellion. If the Lord has been speaking to us, repent of your sin. If you want the blessings of God, you will repent. Don't continue with those boys at school smoking in, this, in, uh, in secret. You will drop the cigarette because it's the way of the children of the devil. You will obey the Lord. 
All those uh, evil, evil things, the way of wickedness and violence that those other children are following, repent of them. You will obey the Lord. Obedience is the pathway to the blessing of God. Number four, obedience. Now number five, we see that in verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord he is God. The Lord he is the God. That number five is worship. Worship. They adored the Lord. They honored the Lord. They exalted, that means they lifted up the name of the Lord. They said, The Lord he is God. They said, Idols are not God. The Lord he is God. All those um, strange gods with a small g that the prophets of Baal were worshipping. They said, there's no God. The Lord is the God. And they bowed down. Their faces in all humility. They were now going to be worshipping the Lord. If we want the blessing of the Lord, we must realize that it comes as we worship God as the Almighty, as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords. Number six is found in verse 40. Verse 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And he took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kidron and slew them there. You see those prophets of Baal, they were the carriers of evil spirits. They were the representatives of Satan. All that Elijah was doing here is getting rid of the influence and the power of evil spirit in the land. Because, you know, if we're going to have showers of blessing, evil spirits cannot remain. We cannot allow association with evil spirits with familiar spirit, with witchcraft, with anything that is uh, connected with sorcery or magic or cultism. What we call this number six, destruction of evil spirit worship. Destruction of evil spirit worship. And if you're expecting the blessing of the Lord upon your life, because showers of blessings are falling already. And the Lord is going to give us more. And if you want that shower to be on your own life, in your own spirit, in your own soul, on your own body, you must destroy every association with evil spirits. Your mother may not know. Your daddy may not know. And the fellow brothers and sisters who are friends to you may not know that you are connected one way or the other with any evil spirit, but if you know you are connected, whether other people know it or not, you will stop all that. You say, you devil, I reject you. Let's say all that, let's say that all together now. Devil, I reject you. Number six is destruction of evil spirit worship. Are we ready for number seven? I'm now in verse 41, and Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Camel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees, and said to his servants, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up, and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. What do we see there? Prayer. Put that down. That's number seven. Prayer. Elijah knew that blessings will come. Showers of blessing. The rain, abundant rain. But then he prayed. He prayed. That's number seven. And all through this time, if we're going to have the blessings of God upon our lives, we must do what? We must pray. Number 8, verse 44. 
and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go, go up, and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. He had not seen the rain. Only that the servant came back and said, Now I looked. What did I see? I saw clouds. And it didn't spread all over the sky. It was just like the shape of the hand of a man. Even though it was a little evidence. Then Elijah said, I know that's the answer to my prayer. What is that? Number eight, faith. Faith. Faith in God. He knew that that is the sign the rain was coming. Faith. And now in verse 45, this is number 9, verse 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. There was what? A great rain. Number 9, great blessing. Number 9, great blessing. And it's so interesting to me, I even find that in verse 45, 4 and 5, making 9. And so you can see here that the, the ninth one, the number nine thing, is great blessing. Now I've told you that we're expecting showers of blessing. How many of you are expecting showers of blessing upon your life? Now what are the blessings we're expecting? I'm just going to give you very fast, I'm going to see which of you are fast writers. Number one, blessing we're looking for, salvation. Salvation. As we come together here, we're believing that those who have not been born again, those who have not been saved, in this meeting together, they are going to be saved in Jesus' name. Number two, healing. And I believe that uh, we have even asked some people healed of sickness. I believe that as we prayed at the beginning, your sicknesses have been taken away already in Jesus' name. Number two, healing. Number three, deliverance. When we're talking about showers of blessing, showers of blessing, we're expecting that part of the blessing will be deliverance. Deliverance from all evil power, all attack. All torment of the devil. Number four, sanctification. Sanctification. The purity of our hearts. That the Lord will purify us within and without. That within us will be totally pure so that God can sit, Christ can sit upon the throne of our heart. Number five, provision. Provision. Because the promise of the Lord is. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Will God supply? Will God supply? Provision is number five. Number six, academic success. Academic success. We're going to succeed in our education. We're going to pass our exams. Number seven, Holy Ghost Baptism. Holy Ghost baptism. He shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in your school, and in Judea, in your community, and in Samaria, when you maybe you go to a market or you go to a place that is far away from your community, and to the uttermost part of the earth. The place, or maybe your village where you go and you are going and going and going and say, when are we going to get there? It looks like we're going to the uttermost part of the, of the earth. The Holy Ghost baptism, the power of the Lord coming upon your life. Number eight, boldness in evangelism. Boldness in evangelism. That's a great blessing. You know, some people are not bold in evangelism. They cannot boldly declare the word of God, the word of Christ, how we can be saved. That's a blessing that we need. How many blessings am I looking for? Nine. How many have I got now? Do you want number nine? 
Number nine, wisdom like Solomon's wisdom. Don't we need wisdom? Don't we need wisdom? Yes, we need wisdom. I, in, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That gives unto all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavers or doubts is like a wave of the sea tossed to and fro. Let that man not think that he will receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We must not uh, waver. We must declare that the Lord has promised and the Lord is going to give and therefore we are going to have all these nine blessings. What is blessing number one? Number two? Number three? Number four? Number five? Number six? Number seven? Number eight? Number nine, they are all mine. They are all mine. They are all mine. Rise up and you tell the Lord they are all mine. You are going to get the blessing of the Lord. Remember the condition He has given you the promise. Remember you must take a decision. And you say, Lord, I'm decided I'm going to follow after you. You must be in fellowship with God, in fellowship with the people of God. You must be obedient to the word of God. You must exalt the Lord, worship the Lord, honor the Lord, glorify the Lord. And you must destroy, destroy, destroy evil spirit worship or evil spirit association in your life. Number seven, there must be prayer. Number eight, there must be faith. And then number nine, there will be great blessings. Let's talk to the Lord in prayer. There shall be showers of blessing. Believe the Lord, there shall be showers of blessing. We came here for blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops around us already are falling. But for the showers we plead. Showers of blessing. If you have not been born again, you can be born again now. If you will turn away from your sin, repent and turn away from your sin, and say, Lord, here I am, I give myself to you. I have nothing to do with Satan again. I have nothing to do with smoking again, nothing to do with drinking again, nothing to do with evil spirit again. I have nothing to do with fighting again. I have nothing to do with disobedience anymore. Oh Lord, forgive me. Change my life. I want salvation. I want salvation. Remember the promise of the Lord. Whosoever, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for starting with us tonight. We thank you for the promise you have given us. We thank you because you have called us to a decision. How long halt ye between two opinions? Oh Lord, we are not going to be halting between two opinions anymore in Jesus' name. 
Oh Lord, I pray you help every boy, every girl here tonight. So that everyone will take a decision for Christ in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that every association with wicked people of the world, every association with familiar spirit, every association with sinners in doing evil, I pray that tonight in the life of every boy or girl, break it and destroy it in Jesus' name. As we have called all to fellowship, I pray, O oh Lord, that nothing will hinder the fellowship between you and these children in Jesus' name. And I pray that out of the fellowship with you will grow a life of obedience, humbly following the Lord and the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. And I pray that all the time we'll be here, and even when we get back home, that the spirit of worship, worshiping you in spirit and in truth, you grant unto everyone here in Jesus' name. That as they look up to you in prayer, in total submission, that their prayers will ascend to the very throne of God in heaven. Grant these children great and mighty faith. That through their faith, they will be able to have abundant blessings from you. That Lord, for every child here, there will be abundance of prayer. There will be showers of blessing. That nobody will go back as they came in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you touch everyone. You bless everyone. And as you bless everyone, make everyone channel of blessing in Jesus' name. Salvation will be ours of healing, of deliverance, will be ours. Of sanctification, will be ours. Of provision, will be ours. Of academic success, will be ours. Of the baptism in the Holy Ghost, will be ours. Of boldness and evangelism, will be ours. And the blessing of wisdom, will be ours in Jesus' name. Thank you, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead, sing it again.